Hi guys, Wayne and Tom here. Webinar 8 was a massive success. This time around, we took one of our users' videos from the I Use Content Samurai Facebook group, which you'll find a link to under this video, and, with his permission, gave it a live makeover. You'll find a before and after version of the video in the Facebook group, and you can watch the live transformation now in the Webinar 8 replay here. Yep, cool. All right, so, what I'm gonna show you right here is this is that video that Tom mentioned that we reached out to one of our users whose name's Donald uh, and he he allowed us to have a look at his video um, through the week and sort of um, make some improvements. Now, like Tom said, a couple of these videos are being posted already in the I Use Content Samurai channel, um, which we'll get a link to uh, some at some point in the in the chat room. Um, just in case anyone's not already part of that group, it's a really great place to uh, to come, like drop your videos in and get some feedback from the community, and just have a chat and look at other videos that are being made with uh, Content Samurai. Sort of get some ideas and uh, give you two cents worth. Um, so that's a really good place. And Donald posted his video in there and asked for you know just maybe like a couple of a uh, couple of ideas or maybe to see if there was any improvements and. Like Tom said, I've noticed that um, a lot of people are sort of falling into the same like, common uh, mistakes or they're just not doing a couple of things that could be taking their videos to the next level. So let's go through and actually, uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's see if we can take this video uh, to the next level. And what we're going to do is post the original and the, uh, the new improved version that we make here into the I Use Content Samurai channel, we'll have two links. So anybody can click on the first link, have a look at the video. It's only about two and a half minutes long, which is why we chose this video. And then they can look at the new improved version. And you know, if you like any of the things, hopefully I'll teach you how to do them and you can take that you know, to your videos. And if you don't like them, uh, feel free to just not do them. So this is the original video here. That, I'm, that we're all looking at. Um, what I've gone and done is made a folder called Donald Kogan Makeover. Uh, and there's just one video in there. So what I'm gonna do is click the clone button so we can have an original vi version of the video and then we can have a new version. So I'll just pop up here, Ooh, if I can type, and I'll name that new. And that's done got a little checklist that I'm not following along with so give me one second make a clone of it here it is beautiful <coughs> excuse me okay so now I've cloned the video what I'm gonna do is go to the slide section um, and sorry I've, I've, I've learned from watching my replays I need to be a little bit slower uh, so I can actually let you guys in the webinar see what's going on. So now the slide section is loaded, okay? So the first thing I notice is that in the themes, now this isn't necessarily a bad theme by any stretch of imagination, but this ocean spray is just the original theme. So what I'm thinking, the first improvement I could probably make to this video is to create a custom theme. Now. The, the the page that we're going to share, where this video will live, is a page on Donald's website. And I visited that page, and I noticed the, that he had some brand colors. So what I'm going to do is create a custom theme by switching to the My Themes tab. Click the, click the big Create New Theme button here. And I know that his website is called Ability Mission. So if I can type correctly... I think that's right. I'll type in Ability Mission. Just give my new theme a name, okay? And when I visited his website, I used a color picker to to find his brand colors. Now, this color picker was a Chrome extension called Eyedropper, and I believe, Tom, you might have a link to that for everyone? Yep, I've just posted that into the chat box. Okay, great. So if anyone uses Chrome, they can use something like this uh, color picker and it gives you the the hex code which is if you're looking at my content samurai screen in the background color and the text color and the highlight color they're called hex color codes or hex codes 
Are you, are you so able to use the color of that, Wayno? Just while we're on this screen, can you just just to show them how you can how you use that extension? Um, that's a good question. Boom, boom, boom. Just to I'm throw you under like the bus. This. Sorry. <laughs> throw me right under there. Okay, so I've loaded up his website here. Now this is the older of the two versions. Nope, it's the newer of the two versions. All right. Um, whoops. Uh, so up in the top right corner, I'll click this little eyedropper uh, extension. Okay. And then if I click the pick color from web page, it turns into one of those color pickers that you get. No, it doesn't. It just stays as my mouse. But when you roll over different colors in the bottom right hand corner, you can see that there's a little notification box that's letting me know what the hex color is. If I, you know, if, if, if my mouse is on the white, it's just saying F, 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 which is the hex code for white. If I scroll down to the teal blue color, it's, it's giving me like a color, uh, which is 0080B1. Okay. So if I use this extension, all I need, all I need to do is click where I like a color, come back up to the eyedropper and it's, it's giving me a selected, it's giving me all the information for that color. So I'll just take the hex code here and I copy it and I'll switch back to content samurai. Now I have my color and what I'm going to do is paste it in the background color. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you can see that the background's completely changed here. Um, now the next thing I'm going to do to create my custom theme is upload a, a background image. So I'll click the upload image section. I'll go to my desktop, go to the video makeover folder that I created. Let's get right into it. Okay. And you can see there, there are two files in here. The first one is the ability mission gray transparent background. Uh, it's something I prepared earlier. It's just a transparent background <clears throat> with a gray version of their logo in the bottom right hand corner. One second, excuse me. Right. Okay, so I'll pick that and Tom, I believe you have a link to a video we made in our help center that will help anybody who doesn't know how to make a background image, a transparent background image with a logo. Yeah. Um, is that right, Tom? Yeah, I've just posted that one in. Posted that one into the chat room or mm -hmm. whatever. So you see now that this background image uploaded, <clears throat> like I said, it was transparent. So it didn't make any difference to the color, but it did add a little gray or, or white logo in the bottom right hand corner. So that's perfect. The next thing I can do to create my custom theme is pick a new font. Change from the normal Roboto and I, I already have one in mind, but you can pick any of these, but I'm going to pick the one that's called Catamaran. It's near the top. It's just a personal favorite of mine. There's no real rhyme or reason why I'm picking that one, except that I kind of like it. The text color of all Fs, which is white, looks pretty good on this blue background. You know, it really pops out. So I'll run with that for now. And the last thing that I would do is, I've already done, I did this, so I didn't waste your guys' time. But I played around until I found like an orange color that I liked. Um, what I'll quickly do now is I'll, I'll just quickly save this for now and I'll, I'll bold a word on the screen so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So let me just quickly just bold any, any word, a random word. And I'll get back into editing that theme. Okay, now you can see that the, the word guarantee has been bolded. Now, I played around with this color picker and you can see it update in live time until I found a color that I liked. And I did, I found an orange color that both myself and Tom liked. So what I'm going to do, I'm cheating a little bit here, but I'm going to just paste that in. Uh, normally you would have to play around until you find something you like, but I cheated a little bit, forgive me. So there we go. I created a custom theme. Uh, I gave it a name, a background color. I put an image on there, which is transparent with the logo in the bottom right hand corner changed the font, the text color stayed the same, but you can change it if you like, and added a new highlight color that I like. And once I click update theme, 
I'll quickly scroll down a little bit. You can see it's added to my entire slide deck. And it's also saved over here in my themes. So if I wanted to create a new video, I could just quickly add this. You only have to make the theme once. It's not an every video type thing. Just quickly make it once. It adds to your entire slide deck and it saves for new videos. Um, so you can see that I've made a few of them. Um, got a market samurai theme, a content samurai theme, and then it's a and digital marketing weekly theme. And now I have my new ability mission theme. So that is the first thing you can do to uh, to spice up your video a little bit if you don't want to use any of the basic themes um, or built-in themes that we've already given you. The second thing, I think, is that pretty much it for the... Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah we've covered that. Round one. So create custom themes is done. Now the second thing I would do is create a secondary reading path by highlighting a few words on each slide and that's a really cool way just to uh, just to, to draw emphasis to a few words. Um, so what I'm going to do is you can also space out your words a little bit. Um, so I'm going to do that. Can you guarantee that I will get a grant? So what I'm going to do, uh, like I said, I'm just going to find a few words on each slide I'm going to highlight them and make them bold. And it, it really helps for the reader to follow along with. And you just highlight the important words on a slide. And um, yeah, like I said, it creates a secondary reading path. So without really even noticing it, if, it's, if someone's just watching your video, their eyes are drawn to the highlighted words or the bold or the colorful words. And you can sort of get your point across, um, you know, um, just by highlighting a few words, uh, the more important important words on a slide. So what I'm going to do now, uh, while you guys are all watching along with me, is I'll go through the first 10 or 15 slides or something like that. And you can watch me, you can watch the process that I take to highlight the words. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, feel free to pop them into the chat room. And Tom, you cool to just answer a few questions while I go through? Yep. Fire away, guys. If you've got any questions so far of what you've seen. Um ask them and I'll, I'll try and answer them whilst Wayne is going through and, and adding these highlights. Maybe one thing I could mention too is that there is a keyboard shortcut for bolding. I haven't done it yet. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going up to the top left corner and clicking "Make Text Bold" that button. But let's say I wanted to highlight your and save a little bit of time. I could press Control B for Windows or Command B, just like that, for Mac, and that will bold anything. Yeah. Uh, Digital Dave said he would just highlight. Uh, just guaranteed. I think that was on the on the first one. So everyone's got different um, different ways of highlighting, and that's that's the the great thing. Um, you know, if you if we all did it the same way, it would it would be boring videos. So um, mm -hmm. I know I know Wayne and myself when we do videos, we we both highlight completely different things as well. So um, it's mm -hmm. yeah, there's there, there's actually no right answer to which words you should bold. Um, it's kind of open to interpretation and, and, um, you know, you just go with what, I guess, go with your gut feel, um, whatever jumps out at you. That's right. I always finish my work, send it to Tom for a review and he lets me know that it's completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, all right. Bob, Bob Reynolds wanted to know, is there a way to add an intro and or outro, um, to a, content summary video there is and we will show you that in about five minutes bob uh, we'll be adding a, an intro to this video and so yeah the, the idea with this secondary reading path is that um, you should be able to to scroll through these slides and by only reading the the highlighted words or the secondary reading path, um, 
you know, you'll, you'll still get the gist of the video. So the idea is to highlight just enough that if that's all someone was to take in, they would still get the gist of the video. So it, it kind of, as Wayne said, it, it drives home the message that you're wanting to, to get across. Uh, Eric said, I note the spell check picked up behavior as misspelled and thus underlined it. What do you do to remove the underline from the presentation? Uh, the underline won't be um, in the video one, once it's it's sent out. I think that underline comes from, from Google Chrome itself. That It's the browser that's, um, that's picking up. But good pickup on that typo. And <laughs> Awesome. I didn't notice that. Um... That might just be me not knowing how to spell. Is that an international thing? Could be one of those ones that has different spellings. It's. I'm um... going to scroll down, <laughs> keep scrolling, and pretend that didn't happen. Okay. Good pick up, though. Thanks. Okay. Now, anyone who has asked for access to the IE's Content Samurai group, you should now all be approved. I've just quickly approved everyone. Um, as Wayne was saying earlier, we'll be posting the before and after videos to the Content Samurai group. So um, if you want to see them straight after this, join the group and we'll, we'll get, the, uh, get the videos uploaded. And now there's a flurry of people joining. Hmm. Awesome. Thanks, guys. And don't be afraid to to leave your two cents, even if you know. It, what am I trying to say? It's it's just it's just great to see how other people think. Um, no one's wrong. No one's right. It's just how you feel about videos. If somebody and, and, and if you want feedback, please let us know because we look at videos and we're like, if someone posts a video, we're not sure if they really want feedback unless they ask for it. Um, and we don't want to just sort of like tell you what's wrong with the video, you know. Um, it's just awesome that you guys are making videos. So if you post a video and you want feedback, please just let us know. Um, it just yeah. might be easier. I'll always ask um, if somebody doesn't post, um, I probably won't give feedback straight away unless they ask for it. Um, but I'm definitely happy to give anyone my two cents or, or whatever. Yeah. All right, I'm getting up to about slide 15 now. Oh, that doesn't work. Let's go. Let's just do the word can. Oh, okay, that stays on one slide. Okay, so that's 15 slides there. Um, I hope that was enough for everyone to sort of see how I go through. What I'll do is I'll quickly scroll to the top here. Boom, boom, boom. Give you guys a couple of seconds to catch up in the webinar. And I'll do a little scroll through. So, guarantee get a grant the bolded words in the first slide. Frequently asked question. Honest answer. If your performance and behavior, granting agency. Now, it doesn't make complete sense, but they are the more important words on each slide. It's not a fluent sentence. Um, of course, neither we nor anyone can do that. Um, definitely the most important words on that slide. So that simple, truthful answer to the question is no. So they're definitely the more important words on that slide. But there is something we can guarantee. So I think you guys are, uh, hopefully you guys are picking up what I'm putting down. These are the more important words. Even if you scroll through and... Yeah, like I said, it's not a fluent sentence. Um, it doesn't make complete sense. If the point you're trying to get across in your video comes out in the in the secondary reading path, then you've done a really good job. Um, I had a bit of time to prepare these. Um, so I kind of had a list off to the side of, of words that I wanted to bold. Um, bit cheeky, but I didn't want to waste your time. So 
so I had a kind of cheat sheet all set up. Now that's how you that's how you create a secondary reading path. I'm just going to butt in where we've got a couple of people um, posting questions and comments about it. Um, Steve said you can always A B test the videos to see what works best, which is great. Definitely. Um, Digital Dave wanted to know what do you suggest as the maximum number of words per slide? It's I don't know. I don't know with words per slide, but I try and keep the ma a maximum of three sentences. I wouldn't really go down to four sentences. Um, um, sorry, another thing. Do you mean lines or sentences? Sorry. I, yeah, I, I meant lines. Like, if you can see this first slide here, there are two lines of words. I wouldn't go to three. Three lines. I would stay with two. That's something I, that I would do. Um, sorry, <clears throat> scratch that. I wouldn't go to four. Four is four is bad. Four just looks like there's too many words on a slide. Um, if if there were four lines, I would simply split that sentence or or, or those bunch of words on to two different slides. Um, you can definitely go to three, but but four I think is too much. Um, another thing I try and do uh, that we've been told by the marketing team at Noble Samurai is that the slide is easier to digest if the first line, if it's sort of like an upside down pyramid. So the, the, the bigger lines are at the top and then the, the line below that is, is shorter and then the line below that is shorter. This doesn't happen all the time. You'll see that there are probably a few slides in, in this video that I just couldn't make that happen for. And that's, that, that's fine. But as a general rule, the top line should be longer, the line below it should be shorter, and if there's a line below that, it should be shorter again. Yeah. So that's that's another thing that we try and aim for. Yeah. And uh, Greg also said, um, in quotation marks, granting agency uh, a perfect chance not to highlight. It's okay to have some slides without the bold, and yep, it is okay to have some slides without the bold. That's perfectly fine. I think it's even Wayne Creighton from wrong, it's kind of like a pattern interrupt to, to not have every single slide the same. You kind of want to break things up a little bit. Um, and if it doesn't make sense to highlight, then there's no point in highlighting. Yeah. I mean, I'm not perfect at this. Um, and I probably tend, to, I, I might even tend to over bold things uh, or make the secondary reading path, you know, um, too, maybe too noisy in my videos. Do whatever feels right for you. Definitely, uh, if you don't want to do granting agency, if you didn't, if that doesn't feel right, don't. You know, you can leave slides without a secondary reading path. Definitely. Yeah. And keep the viewer, keep the viewer guessing. Yeah. Now, um, guys, and, the, and they'll stay engaged. Keep the ball rolling on this one, guys. I know there are more questions coming through. I'll type responses to them. We'll get um, Wayne on to the next section because we're at half an hour so far. We still have a bit. <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll speak faster. Okay, so uh, in the it, what I'm going to do next, uh, now I've done the secondary reading path, I've added a new um, theme to this video, is I'll switch to the images tab and we'll look at, like Tom said, pattern interrupts to keep the viewer guessing. Okay, so the first couple of slides, it's completely up to you where you want to add your pattern interrupt, but I've had a look through this video and I've decided that the first few slides are pretty good. They sort of set the tone for the video and I'll scroll down to about looking at my uh, my cheat sheet. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. It was about slide eight that I decided there is something we can guarantee. Let me just, yeah, there is something we can guarantee. So what you can do, Content Samurai has a look at all of these words that are on the slide and it picks what it thinks might be a great word to search for and it gives you a little link up here below the image search box and you can just click that and it will load a bunch of images, okay? So then you can just go through and have a look at the images and if you find that you like them or you don't like them, you know, feel free to use them or, or, or not. One that we found that we liked was I typed in hope 
which is pretty similar to guarantee. Actually, sorry, I tell a lie. It's because of the the slide after it. Real hope. I sort of I sort of group these together, and I like this image here with this with a wood arrow sign pointing to the right, and it said hope. Now, once you click the once you click the image, it adds to your slide. But you can also change the layout so the text is on the right. Give you real hope. Let me just press backspace so that's like that. It'll give you real hope of getting a grant. Um, and let's just go up to the let's make the slide above it just the same. So I've changed the layout for the slide above and I'll add hope. Now if I scroll down, you can see it kind of has a flow on effect. But there is something we can guarantee that will give you real hope of getting a grant. And and one thing I guess you, you don't or you, you try not to do is to have a, an image flash up for only like one slide because it can sometimes it can actually um, be a bit confusing when you're watching along with with the slides you know images popping up and popping down too quickly so having it across a couple of slides also helps to kind of keep it keep the flow going um, but not have it to be too sort of bam and then away um, it can yeah when you're watching a video that has too many image changes in it um, that are happening too quickly, it can just get a little bit confusing and um, the viewer won't won't really get what you're trying to, to put across. Yeah, so don't be afraid to span an image across multiple slides, just like, just like this. Okay, uh, next thing I'm going to do is just after that, there's false hope, so that ends in disappointment. Disappointment's kind of what this slide's trying to get across. So I click disappointment and let's have a look down. This little kid's kind of cute. We could use him. Oh, that guy with his, with his head and his arms, that's also pretty good. Let's have a bit of a look. There was one image that I came across previously, which of course isn't here. <laughs> um, let's try disappointed. And it was a kid, so let me type in kid. Uh, this is the one that I saw earlier. So I'll click on disappointed like that. And what I'm going to do if there's a slide like that just says, here's the thing, what I like to do, and this is my personal preference, other people might not like to do this, and that's perfectly fine. I like to merge that slide with the above because I'm about to hide the text. So let me merge it first. I'll merge it up, scroll back up to the top, and I'll hide the text, okay? So it reveals this gorgeous full screen image, and it's going to go pattern interrupt, Sorry, let me scroll up to where I started to add images on slide eight. It's going to go pattern interrupt here with a hope sign to the right. And I might even adjust the background image and slide that all the way across and hit done. Now, of course, I have to scroll down to the, the one below it, hit adjust background image, slide it all the way over to the right and hit done. So, they, so they're in the same position. So that will give you real hope of getting a grant and I've hit I, I hit all the text here, but you can see that it's just under the slide, so I know what's actually on, I know what text is actually on that slide. It says, not that false hope that gives you disappointment. Then, then this image will appear and it will say, here's the thing. Then flow on to the next slide. So I think you guys are kind of getting what I would do to, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm at 11 of 37. So maybe I'd, maybe I'd throw in a few more images a little bit later, just again, just to, to interrupt the pattern of everything. And um, yeah, so that's, that's what I would do with the images. Are there any questions you wanted to answer right now on that one, Tom, or shall we continue on? No, I think that's it. I mean, uh, Digital Dave was wanting to know um, how to get the, the, the keywords um, for the image search. Um, the, the two ways to do it are Content Samurai will automatically scan your slides, 
pick out the keywords it thinks you should search for and put them as hyperlinks, the, the blue hyperlinks under the search box. But uh, as you can see, when Wayne was searching for disappointing, um, it wasn't giving him what he wanted. So he actually tweaked it. He went up to the search box and typed disappointed kid, hit go, and then it, it searched and found the, the, the images that he wants. So yeah, the, the hyperlinked keywords underneath are actually automatically um, given to you by Content Samurai based on what's on the slides. Um, but you can always yep. manually override that and search manually. Um, there's one question, that just question from Sonia. She just wants to know how do you divide the screen? Divide the screen. Uh, sorry, I should have been a bit slower. So it's up here. Next, there goes themes, images, and layout. So I clicked layout, and it gives you it gives you uh, five options. The first option is just the normal default option where there's text in the center. Then the next option is text on the left. The option after that is text on the right. Below that is text at the bottom. And then there's text at the top. I like the text in the center for this specific slide. So I'll just switch it back to text centered. And yeah, so if you want to change it, just come up to the layout tab here and you can play around with the layout. And Justin was, Justin asked, how did you adjust those two images? What did you hit? I think he's talking about what the layout, the possibly, or the... Oh no, when I adjusted the images. So what I did, let me scroll up. I'll give you guys a couple of seconds just to catch up because I think maybe I moved a bit too fast. So I'll click. So, so there's a button that runs along the top of each slide. There's a little menu that runs along the top of each slide. And there's a button found to second to the right that's a just background image. You can click that. Uh, it gives you the option to zoom in, zoom out. Uh, those might, options. Might have to go a little bit slower on the zoom and zoom out. There we go. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. So yeah, you can zoom in like that. You can zoom out like that. Sorry for moving too fast, guys. You can also pick the image up, click, drag, and then you move your mouse and it will move the image into position. Then once you're done, there's a done button that you press. So hopefully that helped. Yep. Justin said, thanks. Very simple. Uh, no problem. So what I'm going to do next now I have, I'm going to scroll to the top first, excuse me. So, so I have my custom theme. I have a secondary reading path. I have some pattern interrupts with images um, that get my point across. The one, the next thing I'm going to do to kind of, I believe maybe even, yeah, I'll, this is the final thing I'm going to do in the slide section. I'm going to click add video clip. Let me just get my menu back. I'm going to click add video clip here. And you'll see that I already have an ability mission intro created. Um, that's just not to waste your time. But I believe, Tom, you have a link to a help center uh, video that we made. Mm -hmm. That will guide you into uh, that will that will help you get an intro relatively cheap on a place called Fiverr.com, um, which is about five US dollars um, for you know it's kind of like the the odd job place uh, in, on the internet and there are people there who will make an intro for you. You just contact them. You you sort of like well sorry. If you watch the video, you can see that you go to Fiverr.com, you'll type in intro, and you'll get a list of sort of example videos that you can uh, look at. And if you find one that you like, you can contact that user, um, talk to them about maybe making the intro for you. It should be relatively cheap, maybe one gig or two gig uh, gigs. Now, a gig is, is $5. It's Fiverr.com, five US dollars. So it could be up to about $10. Uh, depending on which intro you like, if it's more, you know, uh, flashy, it might be ten dollars. But usually they're around the five to ten dollar US um, US dollars uh, range. So what I'm going to do is I'll cancel this because I might may have moved too fast. So to to add an intro, I move to the top of my slide deck, and before the first slide, I, I want to click the Add Video Clip button, which is located above the first slide. So again, I'll click that. I'll find my ability mission intro. 
You can either double click it or come down and click open. And then what you see is before the first slide, this video clip is being uploaded to my slide deck. So we'll give it a few seconds to upload. And if there's any, if there's any questions, pop them into the chat room. If I move too fast, let me know. I just smashed a massive coffee before this. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll let that upload and yeah. And so, and so once you've got this, this intro made for you, um, you know, normally it's branding, uh, you can then add it to every single video you make. So, um, it's a once off investment that will add polish to your videos, um, for every single video that you make. So it's, um, it's, it's quite cheap and it, it, it actually adds a lot of value to your videos. Um, again, it makes sure it makes them branded and, um, you know, makes them look professional by having that little intro clip. Uh, Digital Dave said, can you add a video in the middle? Yep, you can add videos wherever you like. So wherever you see that little um, camera icon um, or video clip icon, uh, you just click that and you can add them in. So you can add them at the start, anywhere in the middle between slides and at the end. Yep, and you can add you can add multiple ones. If we wanted to add video clips, you can see I've scrolled down to slide four here. Um, you could, I could add another video clip now and it would also start uploading. You don't have to wait for the first one to finish, although it might be a bit, it, you know, depending on your connection, it might be a bit slower if you try and upload multiple videos at the same time. But you could start to upload them, go grab a cup of tea or a coffee, uh, Bob wanted to know what format the videos need to be. Uh, he said MP4. Uh, MP4 is preferred, but there, there's rarely do we run into a, 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 a type of video that you can't upload. If you do run into a type of video that you can't upload, contact us to support by emailing support at Content Samurai and let us know what the extension of the video is. Um, so like .mp4, dot flv.wav just let us know um, and we'll help you out so you can see that the video is uploaded now and it's starting to transcode which is kind of you know uh, making it content samurai -able for the less techie people like me so and now it's done ta-da all done and you can you can click the play button and and it will play, but in the uh, in the interest of time and keeping things moving, because um, we're almost <laughs> heading onto the 45 minute mark, um, and we need to get the questions and answers section done of the webinar, we'll just continue on. So uh, let me just quickly let me quickly uh, check my list of things to do. Okay, great. So that is the that. I just double check that is everything that we needed to do for the slide section and normally I would move on to the voice section here um, oh, sorry normally I would record my own voice here but you can see oh there are 26 or 26 sentences left to record well luckily Donald had already recorded his video for us and uh, because I've recreated this in my account not Donald's account I stripped his I stripped the audio out of his video and what I'm going to do instead of recording my own voice and and making you guys sit here and wait and watch me while I record is I'll click upload a voice track and I'll go find the voice track that I stripped out of my Donald Kogan video uh, so voiceover and so I found that video and I clicked open and what it's going to do is upload that voice track um, Probably should have done this before the webinar. I do apologize, but again, if you guys have any questions, um, feel free to, to chuck them in. Uh, what I might do, um, what I might do for now is click no voice track and keep going. Maybe just in the interest of time, or should I let this one upload? Let's let's give it a couple of minutes and see if it uploads. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how big it is. We'll answer some questions because there are a couple here. Um, 
Digital Dave said, you mentioned that you stripped out audio. Can we do that as well? Um, I think what Wayne did is he actually downloaded the, the original video into an, uh, an app called ScreenFlow and then took the audio track out that way. So you can't do it natively in content somewhere, but I guess the, the, the main feature of, or the, the main reason we've got upload a voice track there is so that you can actually get um, your voice track recorded by someone else, um, like a, a professional voiceover artist or someone on Fiverr, um, and then you can upload the track there. So um, it's the, the way the way we've used it today isn't a normal way. You, you normally wouldn't download your content samurai video, strip the track out of it, and then add it to another video. Um, you would normally just get someone to record the, vo the voice track um, and then import it and upload it. Um, Roy wanted to know, are you going over timeline speed? I'm not sure what you're asking there, Roy. Maybe post some more info with that question and we'll circle back to it. Um, uh, Bob Reynolds said, can I use Content Samurai to create my voice track and then just export the voice track to use on a different video? Uh, you, you'd still that's, know. That's like the first question. Yeah, you'd still have to download the completed video and then, yeah, play around with it in another app. Um, can we create a voiceover using an external provider and then upload an entire voice track to the entire presentation? Yes, you can, Eric. Um, I think I actually think that that's the way to go um, when using Content Samurai is to, um, if, you, if you are outsourcing it, rather than giving them your login details to your account and getting them to record each sentence, just give them the script, get them to record it, and then upload it. Um, the synchronization works amazingly well. Um, it's, yeah, I think it's a huge time saver and I would recommend doing it that way. Uh, Trina, if we have a video with sound, how can we load that video and overlay a new voice in Samurai? I don't think you can. Well, no. Which one was that? If we have a video with sound, I load that video. Um, do you mean background, like a background track? If we have a video with a background track, how can we load that video and overlay a new voice in Samurai? Um, if you were talking about a background track, you can just do what, what we're doing now. You can upload a voice track or record your own voice track, and then you can move through to the preview section and pick your background music. Um, Hopefully that helps, maybe. Yeah. Um, Terence said, do you need to create lots of small voice clips or one big one and break it up? Um, no, you can just upload the entire voice track um, as one file. Um, you can't actually upload multiple tracks for a video. It needs to be in one, one file. Um, so you've either got the choice to record each individual sentence in Content Samurai or upload one big file that's just your entire script read end to end. Uh, Digital Dave said, will Camtasia do that or Adobe Program? I have we use ScreenFlow for Mac, um, and, but I'm pretty sure Camtasia will do that. Um, this is a very rare scenario that we would actually do this. We, we only really stripped the audio because um, we didn't want to use Donald Kogan's a, a web address, you know. Um, we've, we didn't want to show his, his um, address during the webinar. So, we, so I recreated the video on my account. Um, that's why I don't have his actual uh, recording. But he did record in the app. When the original video was done, the, excuse me, the recording of the original video was done from inside Content Samurai using the record your own voice track feature and Donald went through sentence by sentence and recorded each sentence. Um, we're only uploading the entire voice track because we wanted to recreate this for you guys in the webinar. How big is the voice track, Wayne? I'm just trying to work out if we'll have to circle back to this one. Really? It's actually quite big. So what I might do just to keep things going is click no voice track. Um, now, the the finished product will have a voice track, okay? So just because I'm clicking no voice track is just to keep things rolling here. It's not, it's not because I want a silent video. <clears throat> it's just to keep things rolling. So again, the finished product will have a voice track. But 
in the interest of time, I'm going to click no voice track so I can move through to the preview section of this video. Okay. Um, now I've cleared my throat. <laughs> Hopefully I had my mic muted while I did that. I, I'm here. I'm at, I'm at the preview section. Okay. So what you can do here is you can click the play button. Now, there, there isn't a voice track on this one. There will be on the finished product, but you can't hear audio anyway through this webinar, all right? But I'll just click the play button anyway so you can kind of see that uh, it's, it's going to move through and it goes to the next slide, slide two, and then it'll move, to, move through to slide three. And what I can do while this is playing is I can click the, I can come up to the left section where all these music tracks are and I can click the play button and now I'm listening to this almost back to life and I would also be hearing the voiceover. So I can play a couple of these tracks and find one that I really like and I can sort of get an understanding of like which video might match or it might um, yeah, it might match up with the video, the feel of the video, and there are some really, really cool tracks in here, but they've all got different types of feels. So something within, that's that's a personal favorite of mine. So I'm playing it now, I can hear the voiceover. And let's say I wanted to go with something within. Okay, so I've stopped it playing, but you just click on the title of the video. I'll pause the video too. You just click on the title of the video, you can see it's highlighted blue. Something within is blue. That means that that track has been added to my video. Okay? So, did we get a circle back on the timeline speed question? Yeah, he just, yeah, uh, Roy, he said time between slides. So I think he was wanting to know about manual adjusting the, the time. Um, there was also another question related to this one. Um, what is the percentage of volume you recommend for the voice track? Um, that would depend on how loud the voice track is when you record it. Um, there's no there's, there's no definitive answer um, because recording levels can be different. So uh, I don't, yeah, I don't think there's a, a certain a certain answer just just try it out and see what sounds good um, uh, there was another question how can you turn the music volume down ah see in the bottom left hand corner here <clears throat> on my screen there's a little slider where you can increase it or decrease the background music volume <clears throat> automatically it's set to 20 percent but if you find that's too much, you could turn it down by half and go to 10% or even more, 5% or 1% if you really don't want to hear it. Or you could boost it right up to 60% and have it, you know, have it blaring. But yeah, bottom left corner, there's a slider. And if you record your own, if you record each uh, sentence in Content Samurai, there will be another slider just above the music volume where it'll be voiceover and you can control the volume of your voiceover as well. You can increase it or decrease it. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Should we keep things going or you got a couple more questions you want to answer now? No, keep, keep things going and I'll, um, we'll circle back for a couple of minutes at the end and answer some of these questions. Okay, great. So, uh, so now I'll click looks good. Continue. And I get to the download download section of Content Samurai, where I'm sure you guys are familiar with. You click generate your video, and it's going to start to generate a copy for me to download. Um, and then once it's downloaded, I can use that file to I can upload it to YouTube. Uh, I can upload it to my website. I can upload that that file to Facebook, or you know where wherever you want to share that video. Um, you've got a file that you can upload it to. You're not restricted. It's not hosted on our website. Um, you don't have to send people to our website to watch your video. You use it however you would like. You could, you know, you're hosted on your 
for example, the this ability mission page. I'll just switch over tabs to Donald's website. He has uploaded his video to YouTube, but then he's gone and embedded that onto his web page, which is a really, really cool way of getting your video on your web page and YouTube at the same time. So that's what he's done. Now what I'll do is I'll just quickly recap. I'll I'll leave this. And what I'll do is I'll just recap what I've done, okay? Just to in, in improve this video. And that's probably, that's going to finalize, that's going to finish off this section and we'll get into the Q&A. But what I did is I, I created a custom theme. I'll quickly switch over to the slide section. So I, so I came into this video. Obviously, I cloned my original video. Um, so I had a new version. I switched to the My Themes tab. I created a custom theme, which I can edit again, but I'll just click edit to show you what I've done. I created a custom theme, named it, I gave it a background color, I gave it a background image with the logo in the bottom right corner, I gave it a new font, I didn't change the text color, but I could have, and I gave it a nice highlight color. And the next thing I did is I added a secondary reading path by highlighting a few words that I liked on each slide and making them bold. Then if I scroll down to slide 8, 8, 8 9 and 10 actually, or 9, 10, 11, sorry, because I've added the intro. So I've added pattern interrupts with images. So pattern interrupt, a pattern interrupt with an image, and a nice big image there to drive home the fact that there was disappointment. Um, after I did the images, I'll scroll to the top again and show you that I've added uh, the intro video clip here. Then uh, I moved to the voice section and handled the voice. Um, and then I moved to the preview section and in the preview section I played the video and then I picked a background track from the tracks that are on the left hand side here. Uh, once I was done with that, I moved to the generate and download video section, which is the final section, generated a, a version of my video, downloaded it, and then I shared my video. So that pretty much brings us to the end of the demo section and what I did just, you know, to, in, you know, it took me a little bit longer because I was sort of stopping and answering, answering questions, but you can get this done in about 20 minutes, especially if you know what you're doing. You, you know, you don't need to um, create the theme, and you sort of you're getting a hang of things. Uh, you could you could really just ramp up your video and bring it to the next level in just a few minutes. Um, so it's a really cool way to just to take your video uh, and add a bit of add a bit of branding to it, and then and a bit of style and a bit of flavor. And yeah, it's a really really cool way to bring your videos again to the next level. It is, it is. Now, uh, we we do have a few questions that people have asked, so we will try and answer them as quickly as we can because we are running out of time. Um, now, Wayne, one of the – Roy was asking about adjusting the, the timeline, um, the synchronization stuff. Do you want to load that up and we'll show Roy that? And whilst we're loading that up, I'll answer a couple of quick questions. Uh, Fitz wanted to know, can I generate slides only? Uh, you – can generate a silent video that will run through the slides with no music or voice track, um, but you can't download the slides as, as images or as a PowerPoint, so to speak. Um, Digital Dave wanted to know, can you have the sound at 20% and then raise it to 50% to emphasize something on the page? Um, you can't have different volumes for different slides, so um, you can set it uh, at a certain percentage and that'll be through the whole video. Uh, does the volume sliding set for the entire video or connected portion? Again, it's for the for the entire video. Uh, looks like you've got that loaded. Do you want to show the timeline to Roy? Yep. yep. Sure. So if I you can click in the timeline. First thing is you can click in the timeline, and you'll notice there's a red vertical bar that corresponds with up here if I click this blue, if I, it, it's called a scrubber. So that's just showing where I'm at in my timeline. So you can move that 
and the red vertical bar will move or you can click somewhere in the timeline and the red vertical bar will move to there. The green vertical bars are where the next slide comes in. So you can click and drag a green vertical bar and you can move it so it comes in earlier or you can move it so it comes in later. And so that's how you that's how you change where your slides come in or you know you could you can make them come in a little bit later, come in a little bit earlier. You can move things around like that. There's another cool feature called record timing. And let me just go back a bit in the timeline. If you click record timing, the video will play. Then you can click the next slide button where you want the next slide to appear. So you're listening, you click next slide, listening, you click next slide now, listening, and you click next slide now. And I'm just going to stop that because I, I think you get the point. So you can click the record timing button and you can go through and select where your next slide, where you want your next slide to come in. Or again, just, just click the vertical green bar, click, click and hold and drag forwards earlier or back for later. Yep. Um... Okay, Justin wanted to know, is there a best way to EQ a pesky voice track or add compression or vocal effects like delay or reverb? Um, not in Content Samurai. There's probably some apps out there where you can sweeten audio tracks and play around with them, but it's not something that's built into Content Samurai yet. Um, does the voice track have to be the same as the words on screen or can we elaborate on certain points in the presentation? Uh, if you want the synchronization, the automatic synchronization to work um, well, you, you need to match the, the voice track to the slide, especially if you're uploading an entire voice track into a content summary, you need to make sure that the, the voice track matches the, the script as close as possible. If you're recording each individ, individual sentence in content summary, um, it's you, you can stray a little bit and it, it it'll um, match it up to that slide pretty well. Um, but again, you may need to do some tweaking. So whenever you stray from it, um, it's still, it, it, it is possible, but you may need to then do some tweaking to the the synchronization on the preview on the preview page. So if you want it to be automatic, try and make it as close as possible to the script. Um, if you don't mind tweaking a little bit, you can stray and um, make it a little bit different. Um, now Wayne, Sonia was asking, so sorry to ask it again. I need to know how you divided the screen in two with an image in one side and the written content on the left. Okay. Let me switch back to the slide section. Mm -hmm. This Sonia, was it? Yeah, Sonia. Um, now okay. really, really quickly, I just want to, Steve was asking, are you going to play the before and after videos? Um, unfortunately, we're using Max and we're using GoToWebinar. We can't do, we can't actually play our computer audio through GoToWebinar. So if we play the videos, you guys won't hear the audio or the music or anything like that. So we chose not to play the videos in the webinar, the before and after. But what we're, what we're going to do is we're going to um, post them to the I Use Content Samurai Facebook group and I'll share a link to that group again. Um, in the in the chat section so um if you join that i use content samurai facebook group we'll post the before and after videos so you can watch them on your computer there's no delay um and you'll get the the full experience of seeing the before and after video back to you wayne sorry back to me <laughs> that's all right um i was thinking maybe while i go through this you could find in the help center like you know uh, uh an article that might help mm -hmm. the layouts Mm -hmm. um, and what I'll do, if you can see my screen here, um, everyone and Sonia also, what you do here, oh, sorry, let me go to a slide. So first slide here. I come up, it, you've got themes, images, and layouts. So you click layout. You can move the text. You can have it centered like it is now. You can move the text to the left or the text to the right. That's what I did in mind. So I move the text to the right, which means the left opens up for an image. So you can switch to the images tab, quickly just do a search for whatever image. And 
let's pop this image here. So you can see that the, there's an image on the left hand side and the text on the right. So I'll go back to the layout just so I can show you a little a little easier how it's done. So w with the image it makes a little bit more sense but if you go to the layout tab you can have the text on the left, text on the right, you can have the text at the bottom or you can have the text at the top or you can have the text centered like it is normally. Okay. Um, Fitz wanted to know, can I pause and come back later when creating a video? Yep. You can always close Content Summer and come back. It automatically saves it, so you don't need to, to finish a video in one sitting. Um, there's, there's no save button or anything like that. Everything you, every, every change you make is automatically saved, so you could quickly do something and then close the app, come back the next day, a couple of days later, whatever you want. And it's all going to be there. Yeah. Um, Steve Saunders was saying Audacity is a free program for Windows that allows reverb and such. Um, yep. We use Audacity on our Macs as well sometimes. So uh, if you're wanting to, to modify the audio track before you upload it, check out Audacity. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. There we go. Someone, uh, Adam, thanks for the link. Adam actually linked us to Audacity. So I'll post that in the chat box now. Awesome. Great. And we'll move, move on to the Q&A section. Does that pretty much, do you yeah. get through most of the yeah. chat room? Yeah. Yep. Okay, that's great. Um, so let's keep things rolling and sort of rearrange. So <clears throat> the first question, uh, they had, we had two people ask this. Now, these are the questions that were on the webinar registration page down below the registration video. We asked you guys to put questions just below it um, in the in the little section so we could answer them first. So that's what we're going to do here, and we're going to run through a bunch of these uh, questions. So Zachary asked, uh, he said, "I love content content video, but <laughs> it's content samurai, but love content video, but would like the ability to add a link to my affiliate products like Content Samurai in the video itself. There was another question from Lynn who said, can you include a link inside the video when we are creating content? Now, this is actually a pretty common question we get. Uh, the only way you can add a link to a user's video is if we host the video on our site somewhere, which other people do, but it really restricts where you can use your video. So if we host your video, you don't have control of your video. Um, so you would need to send traffic to our website instead of yours or instead of your YouTube channel. You would need to send people to our website to watch the video, which, you know, it's kind of weird how, like, yeah, you would, we could control things like clickable links, um, but yeah, you don't really have control and you wouldn't be able to upload your video to YouTube, Twitter, Vimeo, you know, video hosting sites like that. Or you wouldn't be able to upload the video to your own website. So for those reasons, we decided to give you guys the freedom to download your video and use it wherever you want. Um, what we do with our videos, which you might have noticed in, well, by posting this, <laughs> by posting this, uh, you know, question and, and registering to this webinar, is that we make reference to like a link that's below the video, which is a really good thing, if you, a really good way to uh, to take action if you're um, if you're if you're putting the, the video on your website. So so what we do is we we say uh, there's a link below this video. Click that and register for the webinar, for example. So that's sort of how we handle ours, and that that might help you guys uh, a little bit. So you can make reference to the description section of a YouTube video. Um, if it's on your website, you could say, you know, click the link below this video and just have a link below the video. Um, but as for actually adding the link to your video, you can't do that with Content Samurai for those reasons. Yeah. Uh, John said, or John asked, can we fade the music at the end of the video? Um, at the moment, the Apple will automatically fade the music um, at the end of the video. I think it it's between, I don't know the exact number, but it's it's between 0.5 and, and one second will actually fade out over that time. So it's not a long fade, 
um, but you should be able to still hear the fade. Um, one one sort of caveat of that is that it won't you won't hear the fade on the the preview page. You'll actually need to download the video and then watch it to hear the fade. So on the preview, it'll just abruptly cut off. Um, so just keep that in mind. I know a lot of people will preview the video and and see something's not quite right, um, but it, it actually does happen when you download the video. Um, in terms of that 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 fade out happening over say half a second or a second, um, we have had people wanting it to be longer, the, the fade to actually happen out, happen, happen over a longer time. So um, if possible in future updates, we might look at adding something where you can set the, the fade out, but it's just, it's not high on the priority list at the moment in terms of features. There's a few other features that we, we really want to get into that before that one. Yep. All right, moving on, we have, Bob, who asks, can we add intro and outro videos to our Content Samurai videos? Um, yeah, we showed this earlier in the demo, just in the form of an intro, but the short, short answer is yes. You can click the insert clip icon, um, which is above the first slide for an intro, and the same insert clip icon below the last slide for an outro. Um, Again, you can add images, you can add video clips in between slides, um, but if you want an intro above the first slide, if you want an outro below the last slide. Yeah, and Cindy said, I have had a hard time with sound quality, uh, but have not tried recording it via my cell phone or iPad and adding it as I have no clue how to do that. Do I have to transfer it to my computer to do so, or can I add it directly from the phone? Um, I guess to start off with, um, we we don't officially support using Content Samurai on phones or tablets. Um, officially, we only support using a, a, a laptop or a computer and and Google Chrome. Um, although there's there's nothing stopping you from recording your entire script um, on your phone and then sending it to your computer where you can then upload it. Um, so you can do the recording on your phone using a, a recording app, um, recording the file sending it to yourself via email or Dropbox and on your computer uploading it. Um, in terms of the, the sound quality, to get a really good recording, um, we, we strongly recommend you use an external microphone. Um, we, everyone at Noble Samurai uses external microphones when, when we make our videos. Um, it's, it really is the only way to get a good recording, um, especially if you're using, say, your, your laptop um, and your you're using the built-in microphone, quite often you'll have the, the, the fans spinning around um, inside the laptop and you'll hear this, this hum. So uh, it's worthwhile spending, you know, $50 on an external microphone. There are some microphones that cost more. Um, for example, we use the Blue Yeti microphones, um, which I can pick up and maybe show you. Maybe not, my cord's not long enough. Um, okay. We, there we go, Wayne's got one there. So they're the microphones that we use. We found them to, to be the best sort of bang for value for uh, bang for buck value um, microphone. Um, I think they're running around $150 maybe. So they're not they're not the cheapest microphones out there. Um, but for, for what you pay, you get a really um, a really good quality microphone. Um, so yeah. Um, we do have a link to the Blue Yeti microphone. Now, I will give you guys full disclosure. This is an affiliate link that goes to Amazon. So if you buy it, we do earn a commission off it, full disclosure. Um, but as I said, we, we personally use these microphones. So it's we're just recommending them because we personally use them. We Anytime we do testing with Content Samurai, it's done um, with a Blue Yeti microphone. So yeah. Check them out, and as I said, you don't have to, to spend that much on a, on a microphone. You can spend say fifty dollars. Um, the, the, I guess the, the the main thing is you want to use an external microphone that is away from your computer and one that you can get um, nice and close to. So if I move the closer I move to my microphone, um, the better the sound recording will be. So um, yeah, the, the microphone is the key to getting a good a good recording. So like I said, you can use it on your phone, but I, I would probably just get an external microphone and record on your, your computer. So the next question, moving on, we've got Ray who asks, some marketers say the longer the video, the better, whilst others suggest no more than five minutes or less for Facebook. 
What are your recommendations and why? Okay. Um, so it all depends on the content and also where the content is being posted to. So on Facebook, some of the most popular cooking videos go for like under a minute, whereas a video explaining business law on YouTube would probably be better as a longer video, like let's say 10 minutes. As a general rule, we try to make our content videos around three to five minutes long, but longer if it's needed. Um, and we aim for say 10 minutes for a sales video, um, just so you get that extra time to explain what's going on and you know um, why the person might be, uh, you know, it, it's beneficial. You know that the person like you can get your point across a little bit better in like you know a 10 minute video. So these lengths are what we found work for us. So the best thing to do is really just to experiment with different video lengths and see which videos perform best on different platforms and yeah, just whichever platform you're posting to. So again, our our content videos are around three to five minutes long. That's what we aim for. Uh, and we also aim for 10 minutes for our sales videos. But just, yeah, just, just get out there and uh, just give it a crack and just see what works for you. Yeah, uh, Russell said it would be nice if it were possible to put a banner across the top or bottom of every slide. Uh, good news is that this can actually be achieved just by creating a background image and adding it to a custom theme, um, similar to how Wayne added the the logo, the transparent logo to his theme for the, the demo video today. Um, so once you create the image with the banner across it at the, the, the bottom or the top, um, you just go to the slide section, uh, go to the custom themes, create custom theme, just as we showed you in the demo, um, and then you can just add it in um, and obviously select different options like the, the, the background color and the font and all that stuff in custom theme. So, um, uh, I, I give a big th thumbs up to the, the custom theme section of Content Samurai. A lot of people actually use the, the built-in themes, which is which is perfectly fine. Um, we we spent quite a bit of time designing those themes and we, we're quite proud of them. But um, again, if you wanted to stand out from the crowd, um, creating a custom theme is the way to go. And yeah, you can put a, a banner at the top or at the bottom to, to brand it. Caught me answering some questions in the chat room because we're up to our last uh, questions and answers question and then we're probably going to have to bring this thing to an end so the, <clears throat> excuse me the last question is from John who asks can I download a copy of the script after the video is finished I start with the script but by the time I'm done it's been edited a lot <clears throat> excuse me yeah you can John definitely just head over to the script section of the video and you can probably see my screen still because I haven't stopped showing you guys. So what I'll do is I'll head over to the script section. Uh, then you can just highlight all of the script all the way to the bottom, right click and select copy. So once you copy your video from the script section of your video, even the, the heavily edited version after you've done, after you're done, um, yeah, just, just highlight the entire script, right click it, copy it, then you can pop it into Notepad or Word or, you know, like an editor program um, for safekeeping or, I don't know, if you want to, if you're uploading a video to YouTube and you wanted to add your script to the description section, you can just copy it from here and paste it in there. All right, that is it for the, the Q&A questions. So, um... There are a couple of other questions in the chat box, but we're running well over time, so we won't have time to answer them. Um, uh, so I guess one, one thing I'll say is if you do have questions for the webinar, the best thing to do is to post them below the webinar registration video. Um, so when we send out the link to the webinar registration video, um, you've got the video and then you've got the link to register. And then just below that, there's a comment section. If you post your questions in there, um, we promise that they will get answered in the in the webinar. We'll make sure that they get, they get answered. So just a reminder to do that because otherwise yeah, we get to this point where we're 20 minutes over and we still have some questions in the chat box that didn't get answered. Um, so I apologize, but we just, yeah, we, we need to wrap the, the webinar up. Um, so thanks for attending everyone. Um, it was an awesome turnout. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the, the, the demo that Wayne did of the makeover. Um, you know, the, the tweaks that he showed you, um, hopefully will, will improve your videos and, um, 
I guess the best thing to do to do today, um, you know, or tomorrow depends on on, on, on what your schedule is like, um, is to actually go to Content Samurai, take one of your existing videos, and try and apply some of the things that we showed you um, in in the webinar today, and then that way you can actually compare the difference. So you've got the old one. Um, so, so clone the video, the old video, clone it, and then and then make the changes. So, so then you can actually see you've got the old existing video and the new one, and you can watch them side by side and see the difference. Um, and as someone mentioned before, you can even split test them. So, um, if you even if you think your videos are okay at the moment, try and apply some of these little tweaks, um, split test them, see which one performs better, um, and then that way you know you're doing everything you can to to get the most out of your your videos. Um, I think. I think that's it in terms of content. I guess one one quick thing is um, make sure you join the I use Content Samurai group. Um, that's where we'll be posting the before video and the after video. Um, and we'll also be probably asking some questions this in, in the coming weeks as to what you guys want to see in, in the next webinar. Um, if you have any ideas for, for a webinar topic or a content, um, please post them into the chat box now, or as I said, post them onto the I use Content Samurai Facebook group. Um, someone's asking about a link for the Facebook group. I will post it one moment. Yep. You should be able to, oh, you're going to post up the link. Yep. If anybody doesn't get to this link, um, <clears throat> before the webinar ends and you can hear me, you could just search, I use content samurai on Facebook and you should be able to find our group. But Tom, do you just post again? Yeah. Yep, I've just posted it. Perfect. Okay. Uh, Bill, you, you, you're the last question we'll answer because it's relevant. I was about to mention it. Bill wanted to know, is there a replay? Yes, there is. We're recording this and we'll send out a replay early next week. So um, we always record all our webinars. So uh, if you can't hang around for the whole thing, don't feel like you, you can't leave because we, we will send out a replay. I guess the one benefit to staying... Uh, in the webinar live is that a you get to see the content before anyone else because um, it takes us you know a, a, about a week to send the replay out and also you can ask questions so uh, we appreciate the people that, that hang around for the webinar because I know it's late over over in some parts of the world I think Donald <laughs> Donald just turned up <laughs> <laughs> that's the user we did the video that we made over the video for hey Donald that's all right. We've got a replay coming out, and your name is is, is littered all through this webinar. Okay. Alrighty, guys. Thanks for attending again, and we'll uh, hopefully we'll see you on the IU's Content Center my Facebook group page. See you there. Yeah. See you guys. So there you go. Thanks for making it to the end. I hope you learned a thing or two from webinar eight. If you have any thoughts on what you want to see for the next webinar, or if we didn't answer a question you have, scroll down below this video, leave your question there, and we'll do our best to get back to you.